Hi and welcome back to the channel. This time around I'm going to be outdoors for the start and I'm also going to be talking about a classic science fiction film that I think gaslighted the entire planet. It's 1977 and the movie is Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Now this movie was incredibly popular at the time. It won awards, it won all the money that was in the box office at the time. Spielberg had just come off doing the incredible success tenpole movie of Jaws and then he got involved with a couple of producers Julia and John Phillips who helped him put together what would ultimately become Close Encounters of a Third Kind. Now we all know the story Richard Dreyfus plays Roy Neary, power repair lineman who gets involved and sees a UFO and then becomes obsessed with a shape which turns out to be Devil's Tower in the center of America and ultimately gets to go on a UFO so that's basically the story we all know it really well but the movie isn't science fiction for me it's the kind of the opposite of science fiction and I'll explain why the making of the movie was really magpies the making of the movie was really weird for a start because it was made at a time in Hollywood which was crazy and and Julia Phillips, one of the producers, wrote a book about that time and wrote a book about her career in 1991, which everybody in Hollywood hated, which probably means she was onto something there. I'll talk about that in a moment, but I've got a cat down here who is really annoying and is very, very distracting. So hang on a sec. She's down here anyway. But anyway, as I was saying, Julia Phillips talked about the movie. Now, this movie was made with a production that was 1970s. People were smoking dope, people were doing cocaine, people were dropping quaaludes. And in fact, Julia Phillips herself was sacked from the production in post-production because of her own cocaine addiction. And she talks about that in her book, which is this one. You should read this book. It's fantastic about 1970s uh, Hollywood. You will never eat lunch in this town again. This is the uncut version. It's pretty thick by Julia Phillips and it's got a lot to say about um, how she kind of helped Spielberg after Jaws to get involved with the right people to move his career forward. He was hanging out with a whole bunch of old fart Hollywood producers and executives and she kind of steered him into the newer area of things. They were doing things like going to parties with Jack Nicholson and John Milius down at Malibu and, and doing crazy things like that. So it was a mad time. And the movie shows that. Now, I've got a real problem with this movie because it makes no sense. Science fiction has to have its own logic. It has to make sense within the frame of its own story. And this movie simply doesn't do that. Uh, it's got some really nice... It's got some really nice international scenes, which weren't filmed by Steven Spielberg. They were filmed by Douglas Trumbull and Douglas Slocum. So you've got the scene in the Sonora Desert in Mexico where they find the Grumman and Avenger airplanes from 1945 that were lost off the coast of Florida. You've got the scenes in India, which were filmed by Douglas Slocum, which are really fantastically well done. And you've got the bits where it's supposed to be the Gobi Desert and a bunch of uh, Mongolian people find a ship in the middle of the Mongolian desert. Those things, hold those in your thoughts because they're why the movie doesn't make any sense. By the way, at the end of the video, I talk about alternative castings they could have done for this one, which is kind of interesting and would have led to interesting movies. There's Luna. She's finally got into the video. She's out in her realm and I'm invading it. I can't fault the film for a lot of things. I think the acting is really great. Dreyfus is good. Um, Melinda Dillon is great playing Gillian. Terry Gara is good playing uh, Roy Neary's wife. Uh, you know, the, 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 and Bob Balaban is really good as the translator in this one. So, you know, the, the acting is on point. The cinematography is great. The special effects are next level. But here's where the caveats come for me. The John Williams music is too manipulative for me 
it's supposed to pull you into this world of flashing zooming lights and light bulb headed aliens and all that kind of thing but for me it's way too manipulative as indeed it was in et works in jaws worked f even in star wars but that kind of over syrupy and, and over egged pudding of the john williams music in close encounters just doesn't work for me and um so that's one thing the other thing is the movie doesn't make any sense as i said here's why They've got that whole big thing of trying to communicate with these aliens using sound and using music and forming patterns in that and using that as a way of ultimately getting some form of mathematical communication going with the aliens. Here's my problem with that. These aliens have had people they've kidnapped for 30 years at least, minimum 30 years. They haven't tried to communicate with them. They haven't actually looked at the books that were plainly on that big ship they kidnapped. There was documentation on the aeroplanes they kidnapped, they grabbed. They kind of, you know, they, what were they doing with these people for 30 years? Obviously there was some kind of time dilation effect because the people from 1945 hadn't aged in the time they were away with the aliens. But nonetheless, they didn't make any attempt to understand this new weird civilization they were contacting before somebody comes out with an enormous Hammond organ and tries to talk to them. It makes no scientific sense. And that kind of cheeses me off. This movie is basically a biblical epic for UFO people. It doesn't make any sense. It's all about faith and trust. And these aliens are not really nice. They have stolen people from their lives and also people whose lives have a 30 year hiatus in them. If you thought the Thanos snap was bad and that was five years long, 30 years for some of these people who were kidnapped by the aliens is egregious. Terrifying people and blasting them with ultraviolet to give them sunburn. It might have been infrared, but either way, blasting them with radiation and zooming around, terrifying people and stealing them and stealing children and traumatizing people. And at the end of the movie, we're supposed to believe the aliens are angelic beings who are going to give us a new millennium. They're going to change the world. And they also have the ability, by the way, to implant obsessions in human beings. Roy Neary and all the people like him were obsessed with getting to Devil's Tower because they had an implanted ID fix in their minds. To do that, these aliens brainwashed people. And then, of course, the authorities are all about communicating with them using these light engines, kind of like George Clinton meets ELO. And I don't buy it. I didn't buy it at the time. I don't buy it now. The movie was all about the feels and not about the brain. And any aliens who did what these aliens did are no better than the aliens in Mars Attacks. They basically traumatized a lot of people. And my theory is, I've got, I've got a way up theory about this movie is, these aliens are messing with the American authorities because they probably already know how to talk to people. They've had people for 30 years. They have had our written communications. They've had even just the writing on the engine blocks of these planes would tell them something about how human beings operate. And, and they had human beings to try to communicate with. The one I watched was the extended version, which came out about 1980. And at the end, they add a little bit where Richard Dreyfuss goes into this kind of disco shopping center alien spaceship. By the way, why do they have the lights turned up that brightly? Are they trying to, you know, blind people? Uh, yeah, I hate this movie because it's anti-science fiction. It's basically a religious cult movie for UFO people. Who knows whether Close Encounters had an influence on Heaven's Gate cult? It would not surprise me one tiny bit if it did. I hate movies like this, and the reason I hate them is they don't follow any kind of logic. The human beings act in a way that's all about giving us high-popping visuals and giving us 
facile feelings and facile sense of wonder without giving us anything grounded apart from the acting. And Spielberg did this for a long time. There are Disney references in this movie to Pinocchio. And using that little motif from When You Wish Upon a Star. This basically is a creepy movie in so many ways watched from the point of view of, of this year. It's a crazy, creepy movie, and it's really disturbing in its implications. Now, having said that, Paul Schrader was the first person to have a go at making a script for this movie. Um, he worked with Spielberg and uh, the Philpses, and they came up with a script called Kingdom Come, which was about a UFO investigator working for the American government and meeting a bunch of people who said they were kidnapped by UFOs. It was a very prosaic script. It was very much tell, not show which is the improvement that Spielberg made on it. There was more show not tell in the Spielberg version of it. But there was some weird stuff in the Paul Schrader version. Like somebody goes into space with the aliens and ends up in a vagina-shaped nebula, um, which is kind of very much in tune with the drug use among Hollywood people at the time. It's, um, I would just like to see that scene. Now, they have Francois Truffaut in there playing Lacombe, the French UFO expert who's all part of this big project that the American government has. Truffaut wasn't an actor, he was a filmmaker, and it shows in the movie. Now, they were looking at alternative Frenchmen for this one. They were going to go with Gerard Depardieu, Philippe Noiret, Jean-Louis Trittignon, and Lino Ventura. I would love to see Lino Ventura in the... Truffaut role in this film. I think he would have grounded and made it gritty. But they didn't go with that. And they were going to go with other actors as well to star as Roy Neary, which was kind of interesting to me. So the other choices they were going to make before they got Dreyfus, and Dreyfus, by the way, at the time had a cocaine addiction himself. James Kahn was considered. Gene Hackman, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino. Can you imagine Robert De Niro in Close Encounters of the Third Kind? I kind of like that idea. I like it because it's a train wreck of an idea. So just to summarise, this movie is basically roller disco science fiction. It does not work at all in any way in a modern context. It's got very pretty lights, it's got some good acting, it's got some snappy visuals, but it's dumb in the worst possible way because the human beings in this movie do not react the way human beings would and it loses a lot of points for that. And those aliens are, they're not as bad as the aliens in Predator or Prey. By the way, if you haven't seen Prey, the new Predator movie that's out on Disney Plus here in Australia at the moment, you should. One of the best science fiction movies of the last couple of years and a fantastic action film and a bit of a game changer as far as representation is concerned as well. So you should check out Prey. But don't bother re-watching Close Encounters of the Third Kind. This version's got three different versions on it. Theatrical version, special edition, and the director's cut. So, yeah, don't bother. Um, it would be my advice on this one. It's a movie of its time, and it's not the best science fiction movie. And it's part of that continuum in the 1970s, and I wish this little ambulance would go past. And Close Encounters is part of that infantilization of science fiction that occurred in the late 70s with E.T. and Star Wars and, and this thing, where science fiction was dumbed down to a kiddie level and, with some exceptions, stayed that way for two or three decades. Um, I'm keeping this copy, of course, because I don't get rid of videos. But for me, it's a movie that I find incredibly stupid. A lot of people disagree. Let me know if you disagree. I'm happy to have a bit of a discussion about it in the comments. But anyway, that's it for this time around. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video or you want to argue with the video, hit like, subscribe, and leave a comment. You can also support the channel by going to patreon.com slash paleocinema. I've uh, got some other stuff planned for the weekend, and that should be a bit of fun as well. got some new videos I want to talk about uh, that I picked up, and I've got some on the way that are kind of cool as well. So anyway, look after yourselves. Watch some good movies, watch some bad movies. Don't watch this movie, and I'll catch you next time.